Oh, thank you, Stian. Have you seen the latest episode from the Golden Trade War series? Don't you? Really? Come on, go check it! Previously on the Golden Trail World Series, on the hottest day in the history of the Zigama Scori Marathon, Kylian Jornet got the lead early after the start and had control of the competition from there to grab his ninth victory in Zigama. On the women's side, Eliane was the surprise of the day, running a brilliant race to win her first trail marathon ever. Moving on to Chamonix for the second stop of the Golden Trail World Series, the race started super fast. Andy Walker had a solid advantage over the rest, but at the end, the rookie Davide Magnini from Italy won the marathon du Mont Blanc. In the women's side, the first kilometers of the race were very fast too. Silvia Rampazzo led the second half of the race until Ruth Croft took the lead and won her first race on her 2019 campaign. Let's take a look at the leaderboard situation and how it changed after the marathon du Mont Blanc. On the men's leaderboard, Bartolome climbs to the top, establishing himself as the new golden leader. Second, we have Stian Angerman, climbing up two positions. Third is Tivo Varonian that maintains that third spot. Climbing from the ninth position to the fourth, we have Andy Walker. Since Killian didn't compete in the marathon du Mont Blanc, he goes down to the fifth position. On the women's leaderboard, the rookie Eliane confirms that she's more than ready to be here. She consolidates herself as the new golden leader and gains a little bit of advantage over the rest. In the second place and climbing one position, we have Amandine Ferrado, taking the second spot from Elisa Desco that went down to the sixth. Mercedes Pila, that was sitting seventh, went up to the third. In the fourth position, we have Spain's Oyana that was sitting tenth. And just making the fifth position and earning 100 points, we have Ruth Croft after her first appearance on this Golden Trail World Series 2019. <laughs> welcome to Italy, welcome to the Dolomites, and welcome in Val di Fassa, Canazze. We are here for the third stage of the Golden Trail World Series. We are surrounded by some of the most amazing mountains in the planet, Marmolada, Gran Vernel, and the group of Sella. So, what else can we say about this place? I mean, they have the best food, there's the best people, pizza, pasta. I'm just, I'm getting hungry just talking about it. So, see you tomorrow and be ready for some action. Surely, the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Italy is pizza. This weekend, we came to the Dolomites to try a few. The town of Canazze is the jewel of Val di Fassa. Pisboe is the highest summit of the Sella range. And Forcella Pordoi is the stairway to the clouds. The Dolomites sit atop northern Italy like a rocky crown. It's a unique jewel in the landscape. For some, it's the most perfect natural architecture in the world. It's home of the craziest Golden Trail World Series race. The runners are not just here for the food, but for the amazing height, technical terrain and speed. Oh, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> if there's a place on earth where dreams and nightmares collide, this must be Forcella Pordoi. Yesterday, we came from sea level, and now we are on 2,800 meter altitude. For me, that's high up. <laughs> He says it's runnable. Yeah, for, for him, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for for us, maybe more hiking. Yeah. <laughs> and this is also where you reach, start to reach the high altitude, so it gets <gasps> harder to breathe as well. A globe there for the race? Yeah, I think it's a mental thing. I feel more safe when I run downhill with the gloves. It will protect me. <laughs> In my lo lucky socks, yes. <laughs> you have to be straight. It has to be straight. 15 minutes to the start. Here, here I am with the coffee, a real coffee, Italian one. 
so at least I start with the right mood and uh, yeah, it's time to warm up even for us. Here, Judith Wither, first time at the Dolomites run. How do you feel? Of course, I'm a bit nervous, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a crazy race and that's what I like. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the first edition of the Dolomites Run on the Golden Trail World Series. If you're joining us now, the race is on in 3, 2, 1, go! The best athletes in the world are here to fight for the win, making it the most competitive and exciting series in the world. Are you okay, Martina? Yeah, see you at Paso Bordoy. Probably they will be more quiet and uh, less people. Uh, this is a quite short race compared to the other two races. The difference is that here the race is only two hours and in Chamonix is four hours, so the strategy is a bit different. Pretty much from the get-go you really you can't have a picnic, you kind of really have to get moving <laughs> at the start. For, for me it's different how I pace it compared to the many of the other races. Yeah, I think that in this race there's no strategy. You just have to, to, to go full gas from the start. Let's take a look at the race specs from today. Running towards the clouds, the steepest uphill of the series, super technical terrain, this is the Dolomites racetrack. The track starts in Canazé. As we leave the town, we have six and a half kilometers to Paso Pordoi. Here, the runners will find the first uphill of the race through the ski slopes. When they get to the top of Forchella Pordoi, they will keep going up to Pisboe. This is the highest point of the race. It's more than 3,000 meters and it offers a full panorama of the Dolomites. After crowning Pisboe, they will start the technical descent going through Val di Lastis. It's all downhill from here going through Chivanese, located at kilometer 17. From this point, the runners will only have 5 kilometers left to the finish line in Canazé. The race is only 22 kilometers, but it has up to 1,700 meters of elevation gain. It's the longest uphill of the series, but for sure is the hell of all climbs. We are at Paso Pordoi. The athletes' pace is incredibly high, but now they're about to face the most critical uphill of the race. Let's see if they can keep up with the high rhythm during the uphill. They are just about to approach for Chela Pordoi. The helicopter is here, so they are coming really soon. David is leading and all the others are just right behind. So that's Marcella Pordoi, the couloir of hell. It's crazy steep, it's crazy hard, and uh, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I think for me the race will start in Pordoi. I will maybe try to, to make a move here and then we will see, but there is a lot of good climbers, so I think on the top we'll be like maybe maybe five together, and then I think the fight will be in the downhill. <laughs> and there are some runners that are way better than me in downhill, so I need to get a gap. So hopefully stay with the best guys on the climb, and then uh, hopefully I manage to run the downhill. <laughs> Um, Ruth and Maud went out quite strong, so they actually took some seconds already from the beginning. I felt stronger when going really steep uphill, so I could catch up with Ruth. Uh, and then going up the zigzags was where Judith, she passed me. And she was just a lot stronger at hiking the, than what I was. Um, and then she started to pull away, um, and I was just kind of really struggling. In today's race, we could classify our athletes in two groups, climbers and downhill runners. Even though they're extremely good at both, some of them will be better at climbing or running downhill. Let's see who goes where. On the men's side, we have Stian, Davide, Nader and Remy, known for their VK skills. In the list of good technical downhill runners, we have Jan, Uriol, Bart and Alexis. We will watch out for them during the downhill. And in the women's, we could consider better climbers Ruth, Maud, Fanny and Ellie Gordon, which probably they will take a lot of advantage during the uphill. 
but we also have Judith, Elisa, Holly and Oyana, which are better at the downhill. In a way, the winners of this race will be the ones that can perform better on the technical sections. The most consistent athletes will have a bigger chance of taking the win. Like we said, all these athletes are really good at both, but since this race demands two very specific skills on a really technical terrain, we will see who does it better. Hey, look at that guy. He definitely found the best spot to see the race. Here is an interesting fact about today's uphill to Forcella Pordoi. Here, we see the Tower of Pisa in Italy. It has a height of 57 meters, so the equivalent of running up this hill is climbing 30 times to the top of the tower. And well, it looks like the steepness is probably the same. Can you imagine that? Well, that's what the athletes are going through today. It looks kind of easy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, super easy. <laughs> super easy, I'll tell. <laughs> like, no problem. <laughs> We have a temperature of 9 degrees above 3,000 meters at the top of Pisboe. Now, the enemy has changed and it's no longer the steepness, but the altitude. At 3,150 meters, there's a lack of oxygen and some athletes might struggle. Runners are getting to the summit of Pisboe and it looks like Davide is going to break the uphill record from killing Jernet. Well, there he goes. He made it by 1 minute and 41 seconds. Now he has a gap of 2 minutes and 20 seconds against the others. The race is not decided yet. During the uphill, I didn't look uh, behind me. I was just focused on my pace, on my feelings and to, um, to make the bigger gap as possible to the top. Wait a second, surprisingly the Peruvian Jose Manuel just passed everyone. He was 6 2 kilometers ago and now is currently sitting second at the top of Pisboe. It seems almost impossible to gain 4 positions against the top class athletes, but somehow he did it. So far, now we have Davide on the lead, followed by Jose Manuel, Stuyan Arvig who finished runner-up last year, Moroccan El Hossin and Nader Maguet from Italy. The women are now getting to the top of Pisboe. After the climb at Forchella Bordeaux, Maud is still in the lead and has a 3 minutes gap with Ruth and Judith. We knew that Maud could get a solid advantage during the uphill. She's such a good climber. Oh, and it looks like the three of them are going to overcome Megan's uphill record from 2015. We shouldn't forget that Judith Wider comes from an orienteering background, so she's a very technical runner. Even though Mon has a solid 3 minutes gap, we will see if Judith has a chance on catching up with her during the downhill. The runners have just passed the top of Pisboe, and now they're about to start the downhill. Are we going to see some changes on the lead? Let's find out after the outbreak. Welcome back! If you're joining us now, this is what happened during the first part of the race. The first kilometers were very fast, the athletes were pushing real hard from the beginning. Italian Davide Magnini created a good gap after the start with the group formed by Nadir, Elosin, Stuyan Arvik and Remy Bennett. At the end of the climb in Peace Boy, Davide was still on the lead, keeping a solid pace. The women started super fast too. When they got to Paso Perdoi, Mott was in the first position and not so far back, there was a tight battle between Ruth and Judith. After making the summit at Pisboe, Mott Mathis was still in the lead and had a 3 minutes gap with Judith and Ruth. Help, 
here we see Jose Manuel. I think he got on the wrong track and he's completely lost. Oh my god. This looks really sketchy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is he on the wrong side of the peak? Well, the guys behind him were real close, so if he can't get out of there quick, he's going to lose a few positions. Yeah, there you go. So the guys just pass him, and now, if I'm not wrong, he's on the fifth position again. Well, he must be angry right now. This downhill is very special for a few reasons, but we will let the athletes tell you why. You really have to have the focus, and because you don't have to really follow the marks during the race, it's, uh, it's more or less make your own way down. The downhill from Pizue is very technical. The track zigzags a lot, and the athletes will take a straight line to cut down some time. I think the uphill, you can still make up time, but it's easier to make up time on the downhill if you're good at it. Yeah, from what I remember, the downhill is pretty crazy, like um, lots of rocks, so lots of possibilities if you're not concentrating to hurt yourself. So you have to really pay attention to, to don't fall, because if you fall, you fall one time and that's it. <laughs> If we compare the skills you need during the uphill to the ones needed during the downhill, we can see that they are very different. During the uphill, it all depends on your stamina, while the downhill will demand more technical skills. It's all or nothing. If you go crazy during the downhill, you have more chances of going faster and doing a better time, but the chances of getting injured will increase. I was really I'm <laughs> surprised to pass Maud because I didn't see her. She went straight down and I was doing all the zigzags. So she passed me there, but I didn't see her. No, I never saw her. <laughs> I saw her on the uphill, but never on the downhill. <laughs> Um, so I was trying to move quite well on the descent and then it wasn't until maybe 3k away that I actually saw Maud um, and luckily I was just able to pass her on the, some of the bit more technical descent. The pro runners sometimes will also have to deal with the same problems we'll have as a day-to-day -day runner. In the last technical part I get uh, a really big rock in the shoes so I have to slow down a little bit in the section in the wood and uh, there I, th I think I lost some second. In fact, uh, the second runner was closer to me and after when I reached the, the more runnable part, the last K of the downhill, the, the rock moved in my shoes and I was able to push again uh, to the finish line. Damide is less than two kilometers away from the finish line. Right now he has a good chance of beating Killian's record and also to break the two hours mark. To do that he should be running at least at a pace of under three minutes per kilometer. What a great race from the young Italian winning two races in a row. I think we have a new competitor to watch out for. He raced using all his potential but this year it won't be enough to break Killian's record. He came in 14 seconds short. 
That was so close. <laughs> Maybe because of the stone he got in his shoe during the downhill, he wasn't able to run as fast as he should. I'm not good in the downhill, but I'm really happy with my performance. Yesterday I ate lunch with Hassan and he told me, I'm not that strong in the downhill, I fail all the times. So I said to myself, okay, maybe he's not that strong. Then, since we left Peace Boe until almost the finish line, he was literally always with me, so I realized he wasn't as bad as he said on the downhill. We decided to finish the race together, just above Kanazé, and to me this was a beautiful moment of sport, and something that people will remember. Judith Wider, the six times orienteering world champion, is gonna take the win of the Dolomites Run 2019. What an amazing race from Judith, crushing the record under seven minutes and just five minutes lower than the downhill record from Killian Jeanette. What a rocket! Coming in like the underdog and playing a very smart race, she managed to get the win here in Canada. So, Ruth, are you happy? Oh yeah, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really happy because for me this race is quite short um, and it's a bit out of my comfort zone and so to come here and get second, I was yeah, really pleased with it. I thought I was the second woman in the finish line. Ruth Croft passed me two kilometers before the arrival and then I thought, yes, I'm second. But as soon as I arrived and saw Judith, I was like, what? But it is what it is. You're already there and voilà. Once again, what an incredible race from him. He was faster than Killian at the top, but just 30 seconds lower at the finish line, so no record today. But we had a huge record from the female. Judith Wither broke it by seven minutes or even more. What an amazing race. Now we just, uh, we are waiting you in Sierzinal for the fourth stage of the Golden Trail World Series. Let's take a look at the leaderboard after the Dolomites run. On the men's leaderboard, Bart is still the golden leader and Stian is still second. After today's race, they managed to keep the same spot on the leaderboard. Davide, after this win, climbs up to the third spot, followed closely by Nadir with only 24 points of difference. Tivot Veronian, after not racing here in Italy, he descends from the third position to the fifth. On the women's leaderboard, Eliane loses her golden leader spot and this one is taken by Ruth Croft, establishing herself as the new golden leader. Eliane goes down to the second position, followed by Amandine Ferrado. Fourth position is for Elisa Desco, that climbed two positions on this last race. Fifth is Silvia Rampazzo, that climbed two positions and is now sitting fifth of the Golden Trail World Series leaderboard. Thanks for watching, what a great day full of action! The next stop of the series is Sierra Zinal. Killian will be back in the tour and everyone is trying to get enough points to be in the top 10. Exciting times ahead of the Golden Trail World Series. See you in Switzerland! Last year in Sierra Zinal, right after the start, Killian Jornet and a group that included Davide Magnini, Francesco Papi and Joe Gray arrived at kilometer 7 altogether. The Catalan ran away from the competition in the second half of the race to capture his sixth title here, overcoming the five titles of Ricardo Mejia. The second position was for Robbie Simpson and the third for Robert Sarum from Kenya. The women's race was a repeat of the 2017 edition, with the top two places going the same way they did the year before. Lucy Wambui moved to the front earlier on and never seemed in much danger of being overtaken. She was the only woman to break the three-hour mark, finishing in 2 hours, 57 minutes and 54 seconds. Only 3 minutes and 35 seconds later, it was Germany's Michelle Maillet who came in second. And running at home, it was the Swiss athlete Simon Truxler who took the third position. But yeah, after all, what's your favorite Italian dish? Pizza. Pizza Remi. Mediterranea con huevo. <laughs>